for an opportunity again to be the house of the Lord. And I say be the house of the Lord because we all have a responsibility. And we all are, the Bible says in Ephesians, bodily organs fitly joined together to make the body of Christ. He's the head and we're the body. Whether you be a finger, whether you be a, a, a thumb, whether you be a nail, whether you be a toe, whether you be a leg, you are the body of Christ. And in him we live, move, and have our very being. So today we're going to talk about the ministry of Christianity. And first of all, though, let's uh, go ahead and do a psalmist moment. And my wife is going to be not only doing the psalmist psalm for the psalmist moment, she's going to be reading the scripture for me today as I put it on the screen. So, honey, what's the scripture for today? Uh, it comes from the New International Version of Psalms 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Hallelujah. Psalms 91. That's a good psalm. It is. Praise God. Praise God. So in today's message, I want to share with you, as Christians or people that profess Christianity, that's the thing about Christians. We are called Christians because of the scripture in the book of Acts, in chapter 11, verse 25 and 26, when Barnabas came into Tarsus, and he came to seek Saul, and when he found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And the Bible says he came to pass that the whole year they assembled themselves in a church, with the church, and taught much people. And the disciples was first called Christians at Antioch. So they was called Christians at Antioch because Paul began to assemble them together and with the church. And the Greek word for church is ekklesia. It's the called out one. The one that's been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Been called out to identify their purpose and to walk according to the will of God. So as Christians or as anyone one that would proclaim that they are seeking or that they know God, they're, they're going to have to be daily change in them. And the Holy Spirit is what do the change. They're going to be developing, uh, being transformed into the very purpose that God has called them. And God's going to do that work in them because the Bible says he had begun a good work. He's going to complete that work. But they have to seek him wholeheartedly, desiring to acknowledge what the purpose is that God's called it. Why'd you call me here, God? Why am I called out to be called upon? So the word Christian is defined as one who professes belief in the teaching of Jesus. So if I profess belief in the teaching of Jesus and call myself a Christian, the Bible says that I am the one that would be doing what thus says Jesus according to the word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 says it like this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, any man, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That means that, that if I'm in Christ, the old things that I did are passed away and I'm becoming new. New, that word becoming is a Greek word that means becoming and becoming and becoming. It, it, it's a transitional daily walk that I have to walk with Christ to be transformed by the renewing of mind, of my mind. So the first scripture the Lord gave me here was 2 Corinthians 5 and 18. I just gave you 17, but in my in my notes, but in 5 18 it says this. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. So he, God, was in Christ reconciling the world 
back unto him. So when we think about that scripture and look at it and understand it, when God sent his only begotten son, Messiah, Christ, the anointed one, when he sent him, he was working to bring the reconciliation of the world back to God. The world was lost, and Christ was in the midst of the people in the time he was in, and it was documented and written down by the Holy Spirit, by the men of God, to write it in a book that would tell us how Jesus did it. And so we're going to look more about how Jesus did it, but I'm going to give you a, another understanding of an Old Testament scripture that will represent the whole essence of how Christ in the Old Testament understanding was God working in these men and women to bring them to a place of walking according to his will. When we look at the word reconcile there, in the, in the last of, the, of that 20th verse, be ye reconciled to God. Reconcile means to change mutual. Or it means an exchange. Reconciliation means an exchange. I'm going to exchange my life that I'm living for the life that he gave me. So when we talk about the ministry of Christianity, a life that God gave me is an exchange of the life that I exchanged to him for the one he gave me. Especially restoration to the divine favor. Remember what Peter said in 1 Peter, uh, 2 Peter 1? He said, we've been given all things that pertain to life and godliness according to the, the virtue of him that's called us. And we've been given divine favor. That divine favor is what we all have been given when we come to know the Lord. The Bible says there in the 20th verse, now we are, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. So think about that. The word ambassador means a senior. So if you've been in a high school, freshman, sophomore, junior, and then a senior, you know that you are graduating in that year. So when we look at the word ambassador, it means to be a senior, but implication, it means to act as a representative or a spokesman. So I'm a representative or a spokesman for God through Christ in me, the hope of glory. The word ministry that in the first of that scripture that in uh, the first 18 said it, and, and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given, has, past tense, given to us the ministry of reconciliation. The word ministry there means, it comes from a Greek word, diakono, 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 that's the Greek for it, and it means an attendant, or a servant. Figuratively, it just means an aid, you an aid that's been given, God's given you a responsibility as a representative to be his aid, to be his ambassador, to do what he's called you to do, to speak for him. You're a spokesman for the Lord. So that's why the Bible says in Ephesians, let no corrupt communication proceed out your mouth, but that which minister grace to the hearer, because guess what? You're a spokesman, and that which come out your mouth should not be corrupt, especially if it's against the word of God. So it even means the ministry word means especially as a Christian teacher. Technically, it means an uh, office or uh, service. We all got an office or uh, service in the Lord. Service, those who execute the commands of others. And I'm executing the commands of the Lord if I'm walking according to the duty that's been given to me as a representative of the kingdom of God. One who executes the commands of of another, which is the word of God, especially a servant, a tenant, or a minister. So we look at the Bible, we look at Acts chapter 6, and verse 4, it says, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And I didn't have that scripture on there, but I put it in my notes, because as I was studying this out, we got a responsibility 
to do what the Word of God says. And so many scriptures in the Bible says that we need to pray, pray without ceasing, pray lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubt. And even Jesus said himself in Luke's gospel that I will that men would pray everywhere, would pray all the time. And those just paraphrasing it, but we find so many stories in the Bible, significant, and of the practical things that God desires of us if we would just abide according to the word. I just read you that scripture out of Acts 6 and 4, that we would be able to do continually in prayer and to the ministry of the word of God. So there's a more and more scripture, but I'll get to them some. We think about the woman at the well. I always love that story. Yes. The woman at the well in John 4, in verse 23 and 24, when Jesus was talking to the woman and she said, you, you come, to, we worship in this mountain. He was talking about it in the mountain they were in. But Jesus said in verse 23 of John 4, he said, but the hour coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him, because God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if God calls you out, remember what 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 said, any man be in Christ is a new creature. If God calls you out, think about it. You got to learn that he called you out from your human, human spirit, your humanity, spiritually, your spiritual being. He called you out of the human walk to walk in a spiritual walk, an application of spirituality. So God is a spirit. And they didn't worship him. You got to learn how to get in the spirit realm and learn and grow and be used thereby, according to Acts six and four. You know the ministry of the word. So let's look at this here story that I will have for you in Genesis, and it's about Jacob, as when Jacob was doing what he's purposely called to do, and we think about Jacob, and I and I started way down in verse, I think. Uh, 10 is where I started. But let me give you a recap on Genesis 28, uh, verse 1 through 5. In verse 1 through 5, Isaac called Jacob, and he blessed him. And he charged him and told him to take him a wife, but not of a wife of Canaan. He didn't want to marry a wife in Canaan, but he told him to go to the house of Bethuel to take a wife from the daughter of Laban. And he told him to take that wife because God Almighty was going to bless thee, and he's going to make him fruitful, and he's going to multiply him, and there was going to be a multitude of people, is what he told him. Mm -hmm. And then why did he say that? Because it was a ministry. Mm -hmm. It was a ministry. Who he married needed to be in alignment with his assignment. Let me say that again. Who he married, the scripture says that we should not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. That's so right. who you marry should be in alignment with your assignment, based on the word of God that God will bless you, make you fruitful, multiply you, and cause you to be a multitude of people in the essence of the Christianity. That's the, the sense of the scripture in Genesis 28, 1 through 5. In verse 6 through 9, Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob, and he sent him away to go get a wife, and he said he knew that his parents didn't approve of him having a wife of Canaan, of Jacob. So he saw that Jacob obeyed his father. Take the point on that. Five verses 6 through 9 of Genesis 28, he, Esau saw that Jacob obeyed his father and mother, and he went to do what his father and mother said do, that he would please them. He took a wife of the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, to be his wife. Mm -hmm. And that was Genesis 28, 1 through 9. And now we'll get you into verse 10 through 21. And Jacob went out from Bathsheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted up on a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven, and behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And this was Jacob going out to get him a wife 
as he was told to do, and on his way to to get his wife, the Bible says he went to Beersheba, and he went to Hanan, and he lighted in a certain place. Now, I want you to hear that right there. I like when I read the word, what God shows me in that. Jacob lighted in a certain place, and he tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took the stones, and he placed them there, and he put them for pillows. And he lay down in a place to sleep. And when he went to sleep, he began to dream a dream that he saw a ladder going up to heaven. And that ladder, at the top of it, angels were ascending and descending that up and down that ladder. And it gets better because God was showing Jacob something. And he goes on to say this. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon there liest to thee will I give it unto thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all thy families of the earth be blessed. Think about that. He said, and to thy seed be as the dust of the earth. Now, mind you, Jacob is going to find a wife. And then he stops there and makes a, a, a bed and a pillow of uh, stones and he began to lay there and he began to dream and dream and saw that ladder going up and down and the Lord stood up above him. Now think about it. He's going to get a wife. Now a picture of a wife in the Bible is always going to refer to the church because the church is Christ's bride. So think about that because I want you to get this vision of this in the ministry of Christianity. This is showing us a picture of what God was showing Jacob. What he was showing him in verse 14 there for his seed. Now, how is he going to have seed? He's going to have to have a wife that was called to be his wife, and he's going to have to reproduce children, and children that would be able to be his seed, as many as the dust of the earth, and the spread abroad of the west, east, and north, and the south, and thy seed shall what? I like that part. In thy seed, all the families of the earth is going to be blessed. Remember that, church, because here's the thing. It's not only about you. That's right. It's about the rest of your family and all the families of the earth. Because I grant you, along your path of where you're going, you're going to come into other people. And other people you come in contact with, you're going to have to be able to share the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciliation, according to that first scripture we had in 2 Corinthians 5 and 18. Most people say, well, I don't really know what my calling is, Brother Jay. I don't really know what God's called me to do. Read 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, if any man be in Christ as a new creature. Then read 5, 2 Corinthians 2 and 18, and then see what the scripture says in 18. You have a ministry of reconciliation. If you don't know what your calling is, you got a ministry of reconciliation. Reconciling people to exchange their life for the life that God's given you. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the key of your ministry. And if you don't get nothing else, get that. you got other gifts and counts, I'm sure. In verse 14, it says that. We look at Genesis chapter, back up to Abraham. In Genesis chapter, four, uh, chapter 12, when God told Abraham, he told Abraham this. Go to a place that I send you, Abraham. And where you go, I'm going to go with you. He told Abraham that. And Abraham, in chapter 12, verse 3, he told Abraham, I will bless them that bless thee, and will curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Sounds familiar, did not it? He was telling Abraham that, and then his son is, is given the same promise right there, that he's going to bless all those families in the earth through Jacob as his seed. Let's go a little further. And behold, and behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob Jacob awakened out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid, and said, How dreadful is this place. This is 
none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Now I want you to get something out of this. Jacob himself, being asleep, and God was speaking to him, and God said, Behold, I am with thee. And here's what I want you to get as a Christian, your ministry of reconciliation to reconcile people to exchange their lives. God told Jacob himself, he said, he's going to keep him in all the places he go, and he will bring him again to the land to return, and will not leave him. Remember what Hebrews 13 and 5 say, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, and I will, until I have done that which I have spoken to the, uh, God has spoken something specifically for every one of us. And God ain't going to repent over what he gave us to do. He's going to continue to be with us and lead us and guide us if we do what he's called us to do. Jacob asked, awake out of his sleep after that, and just said to the Lord, Sure, the Lord is in his place, and I knew it not. Can you imagine your calling as a Christian in the ministry of Christianity when you go somewhere and you sleep? Say you sleep in the Greek word stuber, to mean in a stuber. You're in a sleepy mode, and you go somewhere, and you in Walmart, for instance. And you have an opportunity to bring a ministry of reconciliation to someone. But you sleep. You walk and sleep. Sleepwalking, if you would. And as you do, you'll say what Jacob said. After you get out and sit down in your car, and the Holy Spirit said... Remember that conversation you had in the, in the Walmart there on aisle 17 to get you some yeast? And you said, yeah, I remember that, boy. Oh, and all of a sudden, it clicks in your head. That person was talking about something they had had problems with, and you had a ministry right then to reconcile that person unto the exchange that even God had for them, their self. And you missed it. You missed that opportunity. And the Holy Spirit reminded you right then while you sat down in the car. You said, Lord, why didn't you say something to me? He was reminding you just like he said to Jacob. Like, he, like Jacob woke up out of his sleep. He said, surely the Lord was in this place and I knew it not. Remember what he said right there in the verse 15? Wherever you go and bring me, I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken of you. He was right there with you. You just didn't acknowledge it. You just didn't realize it. You just didn't put it into perspective that God was giving you a chance to do something right then to bring in glory. Hallelujah. God's giving you a chance. After chance, after chance. But if you asleep, you ain't going to know God's in the place. And that was a ministry to me when I was reading that because Jacob woke up. He had to wake up before he realized that God was in that place and he knew it not. Can you imagine going somewhere and knew that God was there afterward, but you didn't know it while he was there, and he was using you, and he was afraid. That's what happens most of the time. Fear comes over us when we miss the mark. Oh, God. She does. And he said, how dreadful is this place, and none, uh-oh, excuse me, how dreadful is this place, and none other but the house of God. This is none other but the house of God. You know what he was re representing to himself, I'm none other than the house of God. And I miss this. And I'm just trying to give you some visual of what God showed me. I miss this. And this is the gate of heaven. And a gate is an opener, a door. And who's the door? Jesus said, I'm the door. If any man would go in and it would come up to me, and I'm paraphrasing in uh, the Gospel of John 16, I believe it is. He said, if any man would come in, go out and in, and he'll find pasture. Because Jesus is the door. In Genesis 18, 18 and 19, Abraham said this right here. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him, for I know him. Why was Abraham going to become a great and mighty nation? Because God said, I know him. Guess what? He knows you. He knows me. And he said in the 19th verse of, of Genesis 18, he said that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham 
that which he has spoken of him. God has spoken something of you, and I want you to get this today. If you know that the ministry of Christianity is for you to bring reconciliation for somebody that don't know the Lord, and I'm sure everybody in here and everybody that's watching knows somebody that don't know the Lord. And your, your responsibility is for you to bring them into exchange of their life that what God has destined for them, according to what he told Abraham, what he told Jacob, to bring it to the full fruition of who he is. The last part of this verse here, and we'll move on. When, Jake, when uh, Jacob said that uh, surely he was, God was in that place and he knew it not, and he was afraid, and he said, how dreadful is this place? He said, this is none other but the house of God. When he said house, that word house is translated as the word Beth, and it means a steward or a temple. He's a temple, a dwelling place, a habitation, a house of containing a family. There's the family of God out there that needs to be brought to the knowledge of truth. There's people out there that don't know Jesus. You got a ministry. I've got a ministry. Not only as an evangelist, everybody has got a ministry of reconciliation according to the Word of God. When we look at that word, uh, uh, house there, it also comes from a, a, a base word, means to build or to begin to build or to obtain children. Have you got any spiritual children out there? You should have if you are in Christ, and you're a new creature, and old things have passed away, and all things have become new, behold, you have a ministry of reconciliation to bring an exchange to somebody's life, to bring them to the life that God has given them, to bring them in to the family of God, to bring them in to be who God has called them to be. Hallelujah. You obtain spiritual children. Hallelujah. Let's finish. Uh, that was last of that, that, that verse. So here's the reality check as we slide it into the home plan. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16 through 19, when the Lord was speaking to Peter, he said, Whom do men say that I am, Peter? And Peter said this right here in Matthew 16, 16 through 19. Peter, Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answers and said to Peter, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will be on my church, yes. and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whoso, whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He gave key, the keys to all of us. What is the key? It's the word of God. Anytime you can stick the word of God in and twist it and somebody get that, don't worry about them getting it. If you know the word and it's your responsibility to rehearse it, to get in the Word, to study the Word, to search it out, it's our responsibility to keep the fire burning. It's His responsibility to put the fire in us. But we are to keep it burning. Hallelujah. When we look at that word house in the New Testament, we look at the word Bethel. It means the house of God. Here's the scripture right here. We begin to look at more in the understanding here. In Proverbs chapter 23, 11 and 23, it says this. The desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. The desire of the righteous is only good. You got a ministry of reconciliation. We all, as Christians, in the aspect of Christianity, have a ministry of reconciliation because our desire is only good. It's only good for me to bring it to the place of understanding to the next person and to the next person. Not just because I'm an evangelist, but because I'm a Christian. Not just because you are who you are and you got you know your calling, but because you're a Christian. When you understand that, you have to relate to your job assignment. How do you think that that's referenced to us as we come to the knowledge of truth? And how do we bring sons and daughters 
into the kingdom of God provided we're changed and we have a hope of Christ in us, the hope of glory. We have to have only good in our hearts daily. That means we have spiritual eyes. Spiritual eyes to see and spiritual ears to hear. The army, which we understand that is out in the war, is you are the army of God. We are the army of God. Hallelujah. Here's another scripture right here. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. The fruit of righteousness is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. What is the fruit of righteousness? It's a tree of life to bring life to others. Because when you begin to bring people to the knowledge of the truth, they understand it. They come to the acknowledgement of the realization as you give them the word of God. And it's just a little bit at a time. I can grant you, the Bible teaches us that some will plant the seed, some will water, and God will give the increase. But it's up to us to plant the seed. When we realize that, we see the manifestation of God working in such a way that we never thought possible. And God is ready to use us for that glory, for that understanding. Let's read this scripture right here. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I like that scripture there me because too. here's the reality. Everybody are laboring in whatever they call the laboring in of their own recognizance. But the labor that God has for them is when she rests in him, his burden is light and his yoke is easy. It's not going to be a heavy responsibility because the Holy Spirit's going to do the work through you. And it's important, you and I, to come to that realization. When we understand that, it's so important to make us learn how to rest in the Lord because he says in that 29th verse, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. Rest doesn't mean you cease from anything, but it means that you cease from your own work and you do the work of the Lord. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 11 and 23 that we had a while ago, I love the translation of the Passion Translation. It said, true lovers of God are filled with the longing for what is pleasing and good, but the wicked can only expect doom. So, True lovers of God are filled with the longing of what is pleasing and good. True lovers. What did Jesus tell the woman at the well? He said that God's a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we got to get to that place in our walk with God that we're doing what he's called us to do. Here's what the scripture says in this verse right here in the message Bible. I'm going to read that, and we're about ready to close this message out. It says, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me, and you recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. That's the key right there of ministry of Christianity. It's coming to the Lord, getting being tired of religion, getting worn out on religion. Come to him and let him recover your life, and let him show you the real rest. As you walk with him and you work with him, he'll show you how to do it. And this is God in the midst of his people. When James and John asked Jesus who was sitting on the right hand and the left hand in his glory, and this is what he told them. But Jesus called them to him and said unto them, You know that they which are counted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them and the great ones exercise authority upon them but so shall it not be among you 
But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. It's being a servant. Remember that. That word diakonos I gave you a while ago of being a servant. That word right there, minister, is that word was diakoni of servant. And the word minister is the word diakonos. And it means an attendant. What I say a while ago, attendant on aid. If you want to know who's the greatest among us, is the one that's out there doing the serving. If they're serving, that's the ministry of Christianity. Mm -hmm. Serving is just bringing people to the understanding of the acknowledgement of God being who he called them to be to exchange their life, the ministry of reconciliation. The root word of that word minister is the word dio, and it means to bind, or regarding a marriage, it means to be betrothed, to pledge to give oneself in marriage. I don't know about you, but when we think about the word church, when we look at the word ecclesia, is the Greek word church, it means to call out ones. We've been called out and been brought into this marriage ceremony with Jesus. He is the bride, he is the groom and the will of bride. Amen. So I don't know about you, but this last scripture we have, I want you to get this in your heart, walk accordingly, and know that you have a ministry of Christianity, and that is to reconcile people back to God. What is my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge that I abuse not my power in the gospel. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law, as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. What did Paul said, he done all of that. To the weak he became as weak, yes. that he might gain the weak. He made himself all things to all men that he might save by some them. way save some. Yes. So think about it. You, everybody you talk to might not come to a realization of truth. But if you plant that seed, somebody else will come along and water, and guess what? God will give the increase. Yeah. Because if a person is seeking out the Lord, God may send you right in their corridor, and you might be the one that brings the truth to them. Just for a seed. And somebody else might come right along and put a little water on it. And God's going to give the increase. I'm going to go back to one scripture here, 19. I like this verse here. Paul said, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all. Why? That I might gain the more. You make yourself a servant, you'll gain the more. Because at the end of the day, the ministry of Christianity is you being grounded in the Lord and giving a person a little drink of the word of the Lord by you being grounded, set up, and rooted in the Lord. You remember what I said a while ago in the scripture, I didn't have it on the screen, but I said that the scripture in Acts chapter, uh, let me get to that, 6 and verse 4 said this, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. I want you to get that as you leave here today. Give yourself continually to prayer, seeking the Lord, and crying out to him, asking, seeking, knocking. And guess what? As you give yourself continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word, God will use you for the ministry of Christianity and you'll bring glory and honor to his name. I hope this has helped you because as I was studying this out, God began to minister so many things to me about my calling, about my purpose, about my understanding, about my acknowledgement of the word of the Lord that God has purposed me to walk in, to do his will according to his purpose. Every day I'm called, 
I'm called to do the will of the Lord. Jesus has given us an assignment. And that assignment is for you to go out and do the ministry of Christianity and bring people to the knowledge of the truth. Let's tell somebody about Jesus. Can we do that? Can we do that, church? Let's tell somebody about Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for this word. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord, that whoever hears this, whoever abides according to this, will walk according to your will, your way, and your perfection, and work through them and bring them to a place of bringing the word of God to someone who don't know you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, help us, equip us, establish us, that we might bring honor and glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hey, if you're watching this, maybe from Facebook or from YouTube, hey, definitely give me some shout-outs and comments. Let me know what you think about it. I look forward to seeing you in the next opportunity to bring the gospel to you or the teaching on Wednesday night. Definitely, we are learning the principles of the doctrines of Christ on Wednesday. It is a privilege and a, and, a, and a very honor for me to do what God's called me to do. Go out there and do what God's called you to do. If you ever want to give to this ministry, there's three different ways you can give. You can give up here in a place by showing up and giving, having your face in the place, putting it in this bowl. Or you can give by Cash App, IHP Ministry. Or you can give by PayPal, paypal.me forward slash IHP Ministry. To God be the glory. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise